Welcome to the Carl Steinberg Show. Hello, folks. My name is Carl Steinberg. This is the Carl Steinberg Show. This is our first program. We hope it's not the last. And it's become somewhat of a Thanksgiving special, even though we have some pumpkins here and some delicious Halloween candy. As I said, this was somewhat become a uh, holiday, fall holiday show. Uh, we have our pumpkins here. Uh, it's almost, as, as of this taping, it's almost Halloween, but by the time you see it, it will most certainly be Thanksgiving. So, without further ado, here is Mr. Eric Longenecker with a special salute to the Thanksgiving of 1976. Tim, cut it. You know, I said, when the turkey concept was first brought up, I said, I said, there's a good chance that I'm going to look stupid. Oh, come on, Eric. <laughs> well, that's exactly what's happened. You know, I take my music very seriously. It's my art. It's my passion. And, and this is just humiliating. Oh, Eric. Stop laughing, Ma! Eric, that was beautiful. I don't know what, well, there he goes. I think that was wonderful. Mr. Eric Longenecker, who, by the way, carved this lovely pumpkin for us. I don't know if you can get a shot of that. Mmm, mm. that's a nice pumpkin. We've got some Halloween candy. The good stuff, not just the regular candy corn, but just the kind with the little pumpkins and, and mm, things like that. It's yummy. pretty good, huh? I'm about to really dive right good. into one of those. Uh, I did not have time to carve my pumpkin, so Dazio, would you, would you like to carve a pumpkin? I'd We've got you all to. set up there. We've sure. got the, the poker and the cutter and the gouger and the scooper and the candle and a, mm -hmm. a protective vinyl thing on that table. That'd be all right? Yep, let's do that. Okay, let's see what you come up with. Okay. And let's move on to first segment, which we're actually not going to do. But I'll tell you about it. It's called Best of the Band. And this is, or will be, hopefully the next show, a segment where local music instructors and or school band teachers will nominate a student that will play a solo of their choosing um, any talent level. Uh, unfortunately, we did have uh, two violin soloists uh, set up, but one had to cancel due to illness, and the other one, I can't remember. But regardless, they're not here. But if you are interested, if you yourself or you know someone who plays an instrument and is either in school band or is taking uh, music instruction, have your teacher or instructor contact us through our Facebook page. Just put in The Carl Steinberg Show on Facebook and you'll see you can send us a, a message and we'll be sure to get you on here. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, we, we hope to uh, have someone for that uh, next segment. Can we put the Facebook page address on the, on this, there it is. We just started that. That's a good way, until we get an email set up, that's where you can contact us. And again, that's open to all students of all ages. For our first guest, we have a special treat. And I'm sure lots of you know these names because they've been in some fantastic bands around the Twin Cities here. We have Danny Henry and Charles Gare. 
Welcome to the show, Charles and Danny. I'm thanks, glad Carl. you could come Thank on you. here. Yeah, thanks for having us. My first question is for Charles. We were wondering why you haven't liked our Facebook page yet. Uh, Are you mad at us or something? No, no, not at all. Okay, just one. You're probably busy. I'm very busy. Yes. I worry about those things, though. Why aren't people like you? Yeah, I liked it, didn't I? On board, yep. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. And you two have been in many local bands here in the Twin Cities, but you're actually from, where is it? Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Williamsport, yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah, we both ended up out here along with two, at least two other friends. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. So there's a, uh, a crew of us oh. that grew up there and ended up in Minneapolis. St. Paul. I see. Yep. And when, uh, when did you start playing the drums? Uh, I started when I was 16. Actually, it was Charles that gave me my very first drum set. Really? Yeah, yeah. so I was 16. And Charles, you got a new drum set, I think. Right. And mm -hmm. he gave me the old one for free. Wow. Yeah. So how long had you been friends before? To, not say, very long, actually. Yeah, maybe like not even a year, maybe yeah. six months. I used, to, nice. I used to beat on the lunch table, and he noticed that I was had some sort of rhythm. So wow. he decided yeah. to give me a whole drum kit based on that. Now when and friendship. Yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. Thanks. No, no problem. When did you start uh, playing drums? Um, when I was 16. Really? Mm -hmm. And what was your first drum set? Uh, my Here. first drum set was a blue sparkle Ruther drum set. Mine too. Ruther? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yours too. Um, I purchased it off of uh, some skateboarders. I lived in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, at this time, and I, they, these kids needed some beer money or something like that, <laughs> so they sold me a drum set for 20 bucks. Really? I brought that up to Pennsylvania and gave it to him, and is then bought a new drum set, which was that that drum set there. The is red, this the your red second one. set. Yep. Mm. And the first one was what? Ruthers. Ruther. Mm -hmm. What kind of drums are these? That's a Yamaha. Yamaha. Mm -hmm. And when you started out, uh, I'm always interested in musicians how they, uh, you know, because of course until you start playing, you don't know how to play. Right. Sure. Were you playing along to records, or did you have instructional books or something? Like that? Did you take lessons? Um, for a second, um, no, no. I, I pretty much just got into bands immediately. Really? I, I mean, I just found people who wanted to play and learned how to play that way. You know, which I would later find out isn't the best way to yeah. learn. Yeah. Is that why you got the kit? Because uh, you could have you could join a band and you need some. Or make a band, yeah. Okay. It's more about making one. I played along to Ventures records and really? I was really into Ramones records and stuff too. Things that were really simple, so like surf beats and all that stuff. And, and you know, even before that, I had a Casio keyboard with the drum <laughs> pads where you knew how to do it. You know, so I just kind of translated it into four limbs and. And the, for, was that your was drums the first instrument for both of you? Trumpet. Trumpet? Yeah, I sucked. <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah. yeah, I actually wanted to play drums, but my parents wouldn't let me. So. Ah. Yeah, I actually thanks, played the. Thanks, mom and dad. I actually played cornet. Oh, really? In elementary school. I, didn't know that. I have a similar story. I wanted to play drums because the guitar was too hard. It hurt my fingers. I said, Dad, I want to play drums. And he said, First, you must learn this entire book, instructional booklet <laughs> of uh, rudiments. And. I did not. I think I got about a chapter into it, and I, I still remember what I learned. I'm sure this will sound familiar. Left, left, right, right, left, 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 right, right, left. left. <laughs> and that was about that. I never got the drums. I'm glad you guys. And did. now you got your own show. Exactly. And I don't need the drums. Rocky, what? Where's my notes? Got the wrong notes here. And when did you first start playing the drums? Wait a minute here. First instrument, first drum kit, I think we've covered. What was your first bands? Was it in Williamsport or here? Mine was. Yours probably wasn't. Um, yeah. I had a band uh, in, back when I was a kid in Alabama uh, that didn't really have a name, and we didn't, I didn't have a drum set, but I had convinced uh, a bunch <laughs> of guys that I knew how to play the drums, you know? Uh-huh. And uh, you know, they were like, can you play, can you play the, like this? And I'm like, oh, Absolutely. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and then, you know, the day came where they needed to actually practice, and so they used my garage, and uh, <laughs> lo and behold, I didn't have a drum set. Um, so I set up a box, like a wood, like a, not a wood box, but, you know, a cardboard box, a fan, like a, some sort of tub over here, and it just kind of played to that. the box uh -huh. and junkyard And they style. let me do it, and then that was it. You know, I mean, that, I was pretty much gone. Well, I suppose you can learn a lot that way. I mean, think about what oh, we've seen the people with the buckets on the street corners. Sure. And yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They got all, the, all that stuff. 
Yeah, I mean, my first band was in Pennsylvania. It was called the Dummies. The Dummies. Yeah, we started out in the basement, and you know, eventually we went on to make a few records, but uh, nothing, nothing super major. But we did make an album. Oh, those were your first drumming bands. Were you? Yeah. In any other instrument in different bands? Nope. No. No. Mm -hmm. Not before. Not since. Uh -uh. And uh, why? Why Minnesota? What? Did, who did you come at the same time or? We no. came, it was pretty close to the same time, but we had a friend who had already moved out here, our friend Travis, mm. uh, Travis Raymond, moved out here and he was sort of, he was sort of the catalyst for us moving and following. So. I see, so there wasn't a band waiting or anything? Like well, that. actually there was a band waiting. We formed a band through the mail called The Short Fuses, where we would mail tapes back and forth to each other. Really? Yeah, in the 90s, that's how you had to that's do it. That's how that so. started? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard of The Short Fuses, but I didn't know Yeah, this. and we both played drums for The Short Fuses yeah. at one at point. Separate oh, mm -hmm. At yep. one, the same time? Uh, different, different times. Different times. Who played for them first? Okay. Interesting. So, so that was the reason for moving out here, it was music. So, in I was also living in New York, and I was broke, so oh, okay. come out here and live in Minneapolis. So. Wait a minute, so it was Williamsport, New York? I lived in New York for, yeah, just a little bit. And then Minneapolis. Yeah. I see. Long enough to get broke, I guess. And when did, I'm going to throw out a few band names. Sure. Danny. Yeah. Soviets. Yeah. Awesome Snakes. Yeah. And who has the bomb? France has the bomb. Is that the that's order? True. Um, yeah, that is the order. That's, okay. that's how it went. And Charles... These are, I, I'm sure this isn't a full uh, list. I have Harmar Superstar. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm uh, mispronouncing or wrong. It's Bon Bondies. Yes. Short Fuses, which right. he spoke of. Mark Malman. Mm -hmm. Pink Mink. Mm -hmm. Ouija Radio. Yes. 100 Flowers. Yes. And currently the Seahorse. Yep. That's correct. And it's a lot. And your current? No current. Well, I don't have one. Really? Yeah, it's my. Has it been a while? My record player is my band. Has it been a while since you played? Um, it's been about five years since I've actually picked up sticks or played the drums. Well, so. you can you can hold on to these if you'd like. Oh, thank you. There you <laughs> go. Oh, and, and speaking of uh, Ouija Radio and Hundred Flowers, our director Kayla, uh, her aunt uh, Kathy Hickson was in both of those bands. Uh, bass on both of those. Yep, that's. Is correct. that what she played? Yep. Mm -hmm. Ouija Radio and Hundred Flowers. So, so you know. Uh, mm. Kat actually played. Um, guitar in Ouija Radio. She oh, was really? Second guitar player. And now, with her husband Ryan Smith, yep. Melismatics. That's correct. Small world. She's incredible. But other than music, uh, Charles, I understand you work at uh, McNally Smith. That's that's true. Yeah. What do you do there? Um, I work for the music business department. Music I business. Teach kids how to. I teach college kids how to uh, run businesses, with, um, entertainment-based businesses. Oh, I see. The intersection of math and yes. music. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm good at one of those. I had also read, uh, I don't know what this is, but uh, you're involved with Z-Vex Effects? Yep. Z-Vex Effects is a um, s uh, guitar pedal um, company. Local? W yes. Um, right out of uh, St. Louis Park, actually. They, um, really? We create effects for guitar players and bass players and, and other things, too, but um, primarily uh, you know, to make them sound loud and crazy. Now, are these cusp, like if I came there and said I want a certain sound, or? If you talk to us about it, we could make something for you. Really? Mm -hmm. But you do make things that are already done yes. in, in the stores? Yes, mm -hmm. what? we, we distri distribute to dealers and uh, guitar sto stores worldwide. Worldwide, really? Mm -hmm. Is there a website for? Uh, yeah, ZFX, uh, ZFX.com. We put oh. that on the screen? There it is. ZFX. Very nice. Z was there a, the dot in there? Well, we'll figure yes. it out. Z-Vex effects. And Danny, um, I hear uh, you're not only a well, self-described AV nerd at the Pavrick Museum of Broadcasting, but you also have a podcast. What's yeah. the name of the podcast? It's called Jazzed Up and Bonkers. My friend Travis and I, Travis is the same guy whose name I said before. Okay. Uh, he, he and I have a radio show on KFAI. It's a web exclusive show, so there's a lot of freedom, but we play like, um, like uh, we it's billed as weird oldies, uh, punk rock, garage punk, uh, obscure kind of kind of stuff. Yeah, is that so. the type of? Uh, I don't know a lot about this, but is it while you're doing it, you have to be tuned in uh, live? No, listening? it's not live. It's on demand, so and it's web only. But you can go to kfei.org and then find the jazzed up and bonkers. Uh, page and then you can stream. We always have two shows up. 
So you can stream either one of them. It's always the past, the last two shows that are up? Yeah. Yes, that's right. And that, what yep. was that website? KFAI? Dot O-R-G. Dot O-R-G. Yep. And they can go there and then click on Jazz Depth and Bond. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So find our, our page within KFAI.org and then hit play on either of those last two shows. Sounds good. Let's see how long you can listen for. We've got a drum set over there. Either oh, yeah? Either you like to... Uh, Wait a minute, wait a minute. How long has it been? Five, five years. Right? years. You want to find out yeah. what it's like after five years? Sure. All I right. I haven't played in five years. My drumsticks are over there, though. Oh, okay, I'll take <laughs> these. Thank you. Okay. And a one -a, and a two -a. Let's see how Charles this goes. Drums I'd now. like to see this. I drum off. Ready? Ready. Fantastic. Well, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. I, that's about all we have right now. Uh, but before we go, before we let you go, mm -hmm. I've got a couple of lovely parting gifts for you. Let's see here in your old magic bag here. First of all, Mr. Danny Henry, I have for you. Here we go. This wax number one candle. Oh, wow. Ooh. Because to us, you are number one, Danny. Well, thank you. I, I hope you like That's that. Great. I'll put that in my collection. All thank right. You. I'm glad you have a collection, too. And for Charles, you know, even though we've just met, it doesn't mean we don't care about your safety, because we do, especially while driving. Mm. And that's why we have an official Lexus car first aid kit. There you go, Thanks that's it. for you. I always needed one of these, thank you. What have you been talking about that? Yeah. Hey Carl? Yeah? I don't suppose you got anything in that bag for me. Well, of course, I'm sure. I, I hope I have something. Yeah. Let's see here, Eric. Yeah, of course, Eric, I have for you a pack of real wood shims. <gasps> and these are not just any shims, these are cedar, so you know, they're quality. Yeah. Let's say, let me give you an example. If you have a wobbly table in a closet, say, this will not only keep your table level, it will keep away the moths and make your clothes smell wonderful. Take these and enjoy them as I know you will. That's fantastic, Carl, thanks. Well, folks, we've reached the end of our first program. Yeah. But I'd like to shout out a couple thank yous here. First of all, Jim Harms of My Music Store. Not My Music Store, it's actually his music store. I always thought that was a kind of a funny name, but it's actually pretty smart because here we are talking about it more than usual. Yep. My Music Store? Whose music store? His music store. Jim Harms, thank you. I'd also like to thank our director, Ms. Kayla Fuller, 
audio engineer, Tim Zibakowski. <laughs> and our cameramen, Darren Hami, Jeff Stoffel, and Tim Conaway. <laughs> also, our, our lights are by Roger Larson. I think he did a great job. Look at those oh, fabulous yes. colors. <laughs> and uh, and let's see, who else? Dazia, thank you very much. Oh. This whole week, you know how nervous I was. Mm -hmm. You kept me on schedule. You told me to practice my ukulele, which I secretly didn't. <laughs> and I just want you to know it meant a lot to me. You mean a lot to me. I really mean that much to you? Girl, you know it's true. <laughs>